everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today we've got another Franchise Zoo episode here in Lakefield Zoo, and this is what we did last episode. It is an enclosure for the capybaras that came with the new wetlands pack and the bed's tapir as well. And we actually off camera got some good news. One of our capybaras is expecting offspring, which is a huge shock to me because as I mentioned last episode, their fertility ratings were really low. So that's lucky that that's managed to happen. And the tapirs aren't expecting offspring just yet, but it looks like they're enjoying some of their enrichment here, which is really nice. But I did mention last episode that I edited the build as you saw it last episode so in case you were interested let's just take a look around what we did so this is obviously a viewing area over here for the guests this is quite a shallow pool for them and then like I mentioned I added some of this sort of mud detailing on the exterior of the build and changed the color of the build as well and then here in the interior you can see that I added some mud around the build as well and it looks like one of the capybaras here is just enjoying a little nap so that's nice and yeah this is their so social group status so it is lower than we would like so it's good that they're about to have babies because that will help with that this juvenile monkey oh this enrichment looks a little bit buggy doesn't it <laughs> yeah let's go and have a look at the capuchins because this baby monkey is about to age up so i'll put her on contraceptives and it looks like one of our breeding pair is now elderly so we will have to buy another although she came from lakefield zoo so we could just have this one from frontier zoo breed with another one from Lakefield Zoo. Oh, I think this is the only other girl. So yeah, let's just take her off contraceptives. And apparently guests think our tickets are underpriced because we added two new animals last episode, which sounds about right. So let's make the prices 22 and 20. That still didn't remove the notification. So how about 25, I guess then? Well, I'm hesitant to increase it anymore for now. Yeah, that's gone away. So hopefully that's worked. And also I think I'll go around and sort their enrichment in a minute, but very sadly last episode, our cassowary who were our first ever animal in this zoo sadly passed away so so we have got one here that we bred a while back Beda who we can move into this enclosure because currently we've not got any animals in this enclosure and I did wonder if we should have a little plaque somewhere because they were our first ever animals so I thought it might be nice to have a memorial somewhere I'm not quite sure where's best to put them actually but for now let's just put two memorials here next to their enclosure so one for Raul okay so if we go on this memorial tab here we can get all the information here so we've got Raul southern cassowary and this one is for Josie so there we go. Now let's go through all the habitats and make sure that the enrichment is okay. First of all, I wanted to check the enrichment for the exhibit animals because off camera, we actually got some protesters for the salamanders because their enrichment was so low and there was loads of them in their enclosure. So I added a couple, but I might just add one or two more and we can get a mister as well. How about that? And then I don't think the terrapins have any enrichment so we could get a lamp for them a log how about that but yes let's go through all of our animals and check that their enrichment is okay so these tapirs oh they're enjoying their little bath over here that we've given them that's nice and this is the heated pool as well so hopefully they're enjoying that but we don't actually have anyone researching the tapirs at the minute because we're still getting someone to finish off the sun bear research and then the other vet is on the capybaras so yeah they might not actually have much enrichment at all but their enrichment does seem fine the capybaras actually could do with some more toy enrichment could we add this hot water tap there we go i've just added that and oh wow our capybara is having offspring already that was so quick okay oh my goodness we've got two baby capybaras and one of them it's albino and then we've got one little normal one over here this female can't believe it they're both girls as well so this is our albino little girl Oh, and they're just having a little swim. I mean, we've got some name suggestions, so I might add some of those this episode. But if you've got any more for future episodes, then please add them down below as always. But yeah, we've finally got some more capybaras, so that'll make them a lot happier. Yeah, their last meal quality isn't the best. 
and our tapirs are expecting offspring as well. Such wonderful news, that's really good. Okay, so the capybara's enrichment is good. Let's check these otters. They could actually do with some more toy enrichment. So we could put one of this new toys that came with the wetlands animal pack. Yeah, I did put this in and it looked like it didn't work, but I think it actually does. Let's give them this rock otter sprinkler thing. This bubble machine? Okay, they're now happy. And our giant anteater is about to mature. We've got some mechanical research. Oh, lovely. So we can actually change what we're researching now because we've completed all the food and drink shops. We could unlock some souvenir shop and let's also carry on with the Africa theme. Their last meal quality. So this looks as though it's starting to become a problem. The quality of food that we're feeding the animals now. Yeah, so we might have to increase the food quality. Let's see if that helps. Oh, he's matured now. Let's just release him to the wild immediately. The giant anteaters that are in there at the minute are both elderly, so they can enjoy the rest of their days in retirement. Let's see what the giant anteaters enrichment is like. They're bored of this snowball, but they've still got more than enough enrichment, so that's fine. The monkeys, however, they are bored of their enrichment. So let's give them a sprinkler, a ball, and they can have that ball as well. And then maybe a block of ice? A cardboard box. Yeah, that's enough now. The Babarusas, so their meal quality was also bad. So let's increase it to grade two. So they're sick of their food enrichment. It looks like they could do with another barrel feeder maybe. Yeah, that's enough for them. The sun bears are sick of their wind chimes. I'll give them this toy and that seems to have done the trick. And the meerkat's food is also not good enough. So I will increase that as well. And then let's have a look at their enrichment. So let's give them a tennis ball as well. And they're happy now, okay. This is obviously Vader, our new cassowary, and we should probably buy him a mate. He's okay, apart from he's not got enough toys. Let's also get him this ball, this little herb thing, this ball as well. Now we've got quite a lot of peafowl again, and their meal quality needs improving as well. So should we just put all of them on grade two quality food? Oh, their enrichment is bad as well. So how about this mirror? And that's enough toys for them, but they need some more food enrichment now. Well, we could just give them another feeder, I suppose. And that's plenty for them. So that's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're showing off their feathers for us. I think we may have some animal aged up in this enclosure that shouldn't have. Indy, Felix and Shen are our breeding animals. So I think all of the ones that aren't our breeding animals should go. I know we like to keep the ones we've named, but we've learned from experience that that's dangerous with peafowls. So I'm afraid I'm gonna release them to the wild. And then I think that's everyone in terms of enrichment. So our overall guest happiness is in the green. So that's really good. Our education has gone up quite a bit actually. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. And the thirst level is still a little bit low. So we can maybe adjust that. I just wanna go through all of the habitats. But yeah, let's go through all the food and make sure all of the habitats are on grade two food quality. Yeah, it feels as though we've got into the stage in this zoo now where we're expected to do everything to a higher standard and notifications are starting to pop up that food quality is low because we're making a lot of profit and so therefore maybe we have more expectations in terms of gameplay so that's interesting but if we have a look at our education then it has gone up quite a bit and look at our talk so they're now 11% which is really good because last episode if you remember we were really really struggling because they kept showing up as having zero people being reached but look so capuchin monkeys this year has had 52 people reached. So they're all looking really, really good. So that must have been down to the fact that we were overworking our education staff and they weren't delivering the talks because of that. It might still be a little bit early to tell, but we've not got any roaming education. I, I'm assuming this is the roaming education score. I'm assuming because it's not been around for too long. So we'll wait a bit and see how that goes. And then if need be, we can always just add another educator. It looks like this animal talk point requires a staff member to be able to access if I thought that I added them to the work zones but clearly I didn't I must have just accidentally deleted them or something before we do anything else let's have a little look through all of our staff we've got some high workloads here so I'll just train them up educators have a really high workload interestingly so I am keen 
keen to train them up anyway because the higher their training the better the education that they're giving but I might consider getting some more educators as well mechanics let's just train them all up and we've got some high workloads starting to appear with the caretakers so let's train them up but they seem to be doing okay and then we've got a mixture here so some low workload some high workload so I'm keen to just train these vendors up anyway so I'm literally just gonna train them all up why don't we just add another educator then I think that might be a good idea yeah in fact I might just add another one because we'll need them in the future ah and we can reduce the salaries for some of these so I might go through the staff and check their salaries as well because I have been forgetting to keep tabs on those okay so our staff are all now being paid as efficiently as possible I'm tempted to even hire another vet to do research because I mentioned this advanced research last episode and I got a lot of comments so thank you to you guys I didn't realize that this was a feature even though it was around since base game and apparently you just place a vet on an animal that you've already researched and you can complete some advanced research which I didn't know or maybe we should just wait until this sun bears one is complete I'm just eager to start doing advanced research but I think we will wait oh and we just completed research on the sun bears that's good so how about we get this vet on the tapirs I was just thinking we should probably check that we have got all of the right animals on contraceptives our tapirs and capybaras are fine we have got some breeding capuchins that's fine I might get rid of some of these whilst we are here yeah our giant anteaters are elderly but that's fine our giant otters are fine recently sorted the peafowl meerkats we've got three new juveniles I'll just put the juveniles on contraceptive so that we don't forget about it oh okay so we've got a babarusa aged up which is this one and I think we need to release him to the wild because we can't have two males in the zoo at the same time and then we've got two little baby babarusas and one of them's gold that's really good so I think we should actually keep him maybe and breed from him in the future so we'll just put the babies on contraceptives and then we're covered beta ah we were gonna get a female mate for beta weren't we then the sunbirds are fine I'll just put our baby on contraceptives too so let's go to the trade center oh we can actually get a gold one and she looks really good so let's get her yeah adopt her send to zoo send to quarantine i think perhaps it might be a good idea to get another drinks shot so let's have a look guest facilities for the time being until we sort out these a bit better let's just get some more vending machines i think so we could get the milkshake one and then the coffee one as well and then we'll need to put them in the mechanic work zone let's add those okay so that might help but yeah i think i will leave it there for now in terms of zoo management but now i want to start building over here for the asian small clawed otters which is a new type of otter that we got with the wetlands animal pack so that's exciting and they're one of my favorite animals so i can't wait to build for them and i said last episode didn't i that i want to redo the otters habitat as well because we're having some space issues for them and then i may even design some shops as well so that will increase guest happiness when we do that. I will go and get on with that then. I'll start building now. Okay, so we are in build mode and we start out by making this new type of fencing and balcony area using some metal pieces and the small individual plaster pieces that came with the African pack. And I actually really like how this fencing turned out and some of the trim that I make using the plaster pieces because I end up using it quite a lot throughout this build as trim at the bottom of the buildings as well as the trim of both the otter enclosures as well and to border some of the plant boxes that I add. So I use it to replace the fencing for the giant otter enclosure that was previously that South American stone wall piece. And I'm tempted to even go back throughout the zoo and start replacing all of those same stone wall pieces with the plaster pieces instead, because I just think the effect is a little bit more cleaner and also slightly more realistic in terms of what you might see in an actual zoo. So let me know what you think of that and whether or not you would be opposed to me doing that. I also created a bit of a restaurant area using the the coffee shop and Bernie's Bakes as well and I don't think it counts as a functional restaurant in that I don't think the tables and chairs I use actually work unless you connect them to the specific restaurant object that we got in the recent update but I thought that they looked good anyway so I included them despite that and the coffee and bake stores just function normally as the standalone shops that we have in game with me just decorating the outside of them so let me know down below if you know whether it's possible for guests to use those table and chairs 
chairs at all in this context but for now they're just decoration and there is pathing underneath that area so the guests can walk there they do walk about but they can't sit down to eat as far as I can tell so they might just be walking through the tables and chairs instead of actually using them and I also added a small billboard to the front of the coffee shop as well which is currently blank but I do intend to add a picture of a menu at some point just for some detailing but it probably will take me a while to get around to that there's some other billboards that I want to add to the zoo entrance as well and for the ticket signs and things like that but <laughs> it takes a while to design things like that so I haven't done any of it yet but if I manage to find time at some point then I will return to that I also added an additional staff room beside the coffee shop which I connected to the giant otter indoor enclosure and this was because I thought I might end up creating a specific work zone for all of the vendors at the coffee and bake stall at some point so they would need their own staff room preferably nearby to use so that would save them time traveling to and from the staff room and I don't sort this out in the episode today but I will probably do it once we add the restaurant near the sunbear enclosure and sort of work out where all the vendors are going to be and how many we need where and we also add some very very rough block of toilets in front of that staff room as well partly because I wanted to fill that space but also because if we've got a drink shop then we probably need some toilets nearby and that'll please the guests a little bit but we didn't decorate that at all so that's something to do for a future episode and then I obviously end up building the enclosure for the Asian small clawed otters and this habitat was very much inspired by one of my local zoos called Banham Zoo and the design is the same as that in that the otters have a small indoor section off to the left and then there's a very low concrete fence that circles a smallish enclosure with a, an area of water at the front of the enclosure and then some stones and artificial waterfalls at the back of the enclosure and I recycled the plaster walling that we used in the meerkat enclosure and added the plaster trim that I mentioned from the African pack to neaten the gaps between the walls and the pathing so that yeah there weren't any sort of gaps there and then this habitat was really quite tricky because the deep water diving function is really unpredictable and quite glitchy in this game as well and difficult to satisfy the needs of the animals so at first I attempted to make the enclosure with a lot more rocks forming the edges of the pool area but then I end up going back and switching them out for some much neater plaster borders for more of an artificial pool look and this method helps a lot I think with a deep water diving feature because I think a big reason why the area of water is restricted for the otters is because they need to be able to rotate completely for the body of water to count as space that they can use so this is much harder to achieve when the edges of the water are bumpy and sort of going in and out that means that the area that they can move around in is actually much smaller overall and so when I added the plaster pieces in instead the edges ended up being much smoother and I noticed that this had a significant effect on the amount of water that the otters could actually move around in so I tried to make the enclosure as small as possible just in general because the otters are really really small so it's easy for them to end up looking like ants in such a huge area of water and they do still need a lot of water to move around in but I did have to compromise to get the water settings right for them to be happy so I think overall they have like 200 meters cubed or whatever it is if you just click on the water and look at the settings but then the area of water that they could actually navigate was was half of that basically so it really is quite tricky to make them an appropriate enclosure and for it to look good as well but even so I'm still pretty happy with the result overall I think the area of water would be much smaller in real life but it just about looks okay so after making the Asian small clawed otter enclosure I then moved on to the giant otter enclosure as well and I made sure to do the same thing there because we've been having a lot of issues with the otters navigation in the water so I end up changing the design of the giant otter enclosure completely and I'm sorry if you don't like their new habitat as much as you like the old design but I think it works a lot better for them and it makes more sense within a zoo context as well and it also matches the Asian small clawed otter habitat more so rather than the more realistic river effect that we had previously I use the plaster pieces to create an artificial river for them and that means that like with the Asian small clawed otters they have more water to dive in and it recognizes them as having more space and we also did have to get rid of that wooden walkway area which is a shame but it meant that we could extend the enclosure out that side where that was but the guests still have loads of places to see the otters and the majority of the fences around the enclosure are really quite low so I think it does work quite well still and I also added in some more exotic plants and flowers in some of the concrete 
concrete planter boxes in the corners of the enclosure and this is because they do come from the rainforest so I thought it would be quite realistic for a zoo to frame the enclosure with some plants that are native for them just to give some context for the guests and give them the feel of their natural habitat but also these plants feel quite staged and unnatural in terms of where they're placed so it looks like they've been purposefully planted there as opposed to them looking as though they grow in that enclosure naturally so I think that makes more sense within the context of a zoo and I also added a few details off camera as well and you will see them when I show you the build when we go back into real time but I use some of the dirt detail pieces to make the pool areas look a little bit more worn and realistic like I did in the capybara pool area and I also use the terrain tool to add some dirt into the corners of the pool and I thought that that looked quite realistic too because there would probably be a lot of dirt ending up in the pools and as well as that I also added some stairs to both the otters pools off camera because they are both very deep and I would imagine that the keepers would have to clean the pools so they would need some way of getting down to the bottom when the pools were emptied so that they could clean them. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to mention in terms of the build. I know that I mentioned the community challenge in my last video but I haven't had time to think about it properly just yet because I really wanted to get this video out for you as soon as possible after the pack was released but I will organise something very soon I promise so if you're interested in that then I recommend you join my discord server anyway because that's where we will be posting the rules and holding the challenge so that is linked in my video description box down below in case you're interested and if you have any questions on how to join then feel free to just comment and I can give you a hand there but it looks like we are about to finish building now so I will catch back up with you in real time Okay, so we've just finished building, but we've got a few notifications pop up. So before I show you around the new build, let's deal with those. First of all, we need to create a work zone and set that up for our new Asian otters. So let's create a new work zone and add the habitat and this keeper hut. We also added a new staff room over here, so I'll put them with them. And let's call it Asian otters keeper. Then we'll need a new keeper and I'll reduce their pay and add them to the work zone. Then let's set the mechanics here to every six months and we can't improve the food yet because we've not researched them but we do also need to add them to the vet's entrance work zone and also to the mechanics entrance work zone and the caretakers as well. I forgot to add that last time so let's add those. Then apparently our cassowary is ready to come out of a quarantine. So let's put her in with Beta. Oh wow we've got a lot of guests here in the capybara habitat. Our capybara babies are already about to mature so that was super quick so let's just quickly put them on contraceptives and then it looks like we also got a little baby tapir. So he's a little boy and he is so cute. I love their little spots. They are so beautifully designed in this game. It's a shame he's not in better lighting actually but yeah he's adorable and I think he definitely deserves a name and I've got some name suggestions so we might have a at doing that later on. Oh no! Oh goodness, a dangerous animal has escaped. Emergency capture him then, because we redid this enclosure. They must be able to escape, so let's have a look at their traversable area. Yes, there is actually an escape route over there, so I'll just raise up the barriers a little bit and that should be able to fix it. Let's see if that's helped at all. Yeah, that seems to have worked, so hopefully we don't have another issue with that. And then I put in temporarily one Asian small claws otter because I wanted to know what the conditions were like for it, whether there was enough water and things like that. So before we do anything else, I will see if we can get any more. Let's get this girl, this boy, and I want to get at least one other girl as well. So this one seems fine. So let's put them all in the quarantine. Hopefully that won't take too long. And it says he is not in his ideal temperature. So let's have a look. So they need to be in a temperature of 17 to 42 degrees. And I did put some heaters in there. It says the animal is too cold, but I don't understand why because I did add several heaters for now. Let's just move it and see if that helps. Yeah, see, it's better now. Oh, wow, and I didn't realize our giant anteater was pregnant again because it says she's elderly, so I had no idea. That's exciting. Right, and we've got a few zoo management things to do, but first I want to show you around what I built just now for both of the otters. So this is the Asian small clawed otter enclosure. Off camera, I did add some steps because I thought it'd be quite realistic for keepers to have access to the bottom of the pool so that the 
they could clean it and things like that because it is actually quite deep so I did that and then I also added some of these dirt pieces like what I did for the capybara habitat last episode so I think that makes it a little bit more realistic and then this is their indoor section so it's pretty plain at the minute but in terms of their access to water they have quite a lot of water in here 233 meter squares I wanted to plan that we had enough for six otters we ended up having plenty of deep water so that's great and we've got way more space hopefully that doesn't glitch out and if it does glitch out it doesn't affect them too negatively so you will see that I basically did the same thing with the giant otter enclosure over here they have got so much water so hopefully there'll be no glitching with them and yes I also added these stairs over here and lots of muddy details so yeah hopefully you like that as well their keeper talk point is over here now instead and the interior of this build is exactly the same as it was and then they've got two stairways that they can come up to this level and then there's this coffee shop and also the Bernie's Bakes as well next to it. I really am happy with how this coffee still turns out and then over here we've got some foliage, a new staff room so I think it'd be good to start adding some further out into the zoo so that staff don't have to walk as far and then some toilets as well and we can dress these up a little bit at a later date. Oh and we just completed the souvenir shops research so let's get our other researcher on shelters and climbing how about that okay so these guys are ready to go so let's send them to their enclosure and it looks like our giant otters are about to have babies as well i've actually kept the two babies that we got last episode i think it was in this enclosure and they have both aged up so what i need to do actually is just put them on contraceptives i don't think they will breed because they're not alpha but yeah just in case so i'm really pleased that this enclosure is now big enough for them to be happy with so many otters in there because it would be nice for them to have quite a big group so oh we're having issues with the temperature again and it's because it's swimming in the pool oh it just occurred to me that i can change the water temperature that will be it won't it because we obviously got an update didn't we and we added this water temperature regulator i reckon that's it so let's have a look at the range no that's not going to reach i mean we could make it reach but i don't want it to also heat up this pool how about we just duplicate it and then add it back here for now how about 25 that seems like a reasonable temperature yes that is fixing the problem oh i can't believe i didn't think of that obviously i've never had to deal with that issue before and it looks like they're now bringing in these other otters these guys are so cute <laughs> they are just running straight into the pool. I'm so excited to have Asian small clawed otters in this game because they are one of my favourite animals in zoos, if not my favourite animal. I've always said that my favourite animal are fennec foxes and red pandas as well. So I'm so glad we finally got them in the game. And our giant otters had another baby as well. So it is another little girl so that's really exciting oh wow two little baby otters again so we've got a girl and a boy oh no their social is bad maybe they can't access the water yeah so maybe we could add a ramp for them okay so i've just added a ramp for the little babies here and that seems to have done the trick and <laughs> our salamanders have made themselves miserable again by overbreeding so let's go and have a purge there we go so I'm just going to go through it again and check if we need to put anyone on contraceptive. So I think these are all fine. I've just added these baby people. We need to add this baby giant anteater. Also this baby tapir as well. And then I think that's everyone. Then it looks like we've got some high work clothes for these educators. I'll definitely train them all up anyway. And then maybe I'll just hire one more because they do seem to be struggling. So let's add them to the educator entrance and reduce their pay. I will hire another vet because I want to start some more research so let's go over here to vet research well we're nearly done with the capybaras but i definitely want to add someone on the asian short clawed otters and once the capybaras are done then we can have our third person either doing advanced research or some of the disease research as well and then the other thing i wondered whether we should do or not is start adding some web cameras because i've not played around with this function at all before i wanted to add one to the interior of the capybara and tape pure habitat because there's no guest viewing inside of here so we could also have it on a billboard screen over here maybe i mean i have no idea how these work at all let's put it over here for now 
and then I was thinking about having another one in here with the Asian small clawed otters and I've just had a look but I can't work out how to get a projection screen to show it so I will do a bit of research for the next episode and then we can sort that out by then. Oh and name suggestions, I nearly forgot name suggestions so we had one for a p-file that I forgot to do a while back so I'll do that now which was Pippi. We also had one for the turtles as well, balloon, there we go. So we had a name suggestion for a male tapir and our baby is actually male. How about we name that one and it was Doug. We also had one for a capybara to be called Skippy. Let's call this one Skippy. We also had the suggestion Pablo. So let's call the dad Pablo. We also had one for Poncho and Misha. We also got a name suggestion for any animal to be called Naga. So I'm just going to add that to our male tapir here. We also got some otter name suggestions. So we've got Alexandria, Kida. Someone asked if an Asian short clawed otter could be named after their mum Marjorie, which I I love so there you go and then lastly we got a suggestion for any animal to be called Sebastian so there we go as well so that is it for today that's everything I wanted to do today so how about we just take a little look at our new Asian short clawed otters so they are just enjoying their new pool they are so adorable but yes let me know what you thought of this episode down below let me know if you liked it i would love to know what you think of this build and all of the other builds that i did today so the giant otter enclosure too as well as that coffee shop that we added as well and if you have any name suggestions as always leave them down in the comments below and any advice as always is greatly appreciated <laughs> but yeah that's it for this episode as always if you like this video then please like comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching i will see you next time Bye everyone!